again, another item here that's important that should kind of stick out from reviewing this is fire flow, right? So everything we've talked about now has been domestic, what we call domestic type of flows, people taking showers, people cooking, irrigate, irrigating, right? But the one thing that is more critical, right, is fire flow. And this is the flow or the demand required to service a building during a fire. And so, um, you know, typically for a commercial building, right, if you have a building, you would have a domestic connection and then a separate uh, fire connection into your building, okay? And they would both connect to the main out in the street, okay? And again, very important because this fire main is what supplies the sprinklers in the system. It's what the firefighters use once they get into the building to connect their hoses inside the building. So very important that, you know, for a town, if you're a city planner or the city engineer, that your town could not only fight a fire, right, but be able to have, you know, also... Uh, your your water open to the restaurants in town. So you usually want to design to affect or safety or want to have enough flow or pressure so that you could fight a fire or two fires and still have, you know, maybe you could fight a fire and still have enough the flow in your system to uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, service the the homes and the restaurants right maybe if you have two fat fires then it's hard but that's a very low probability that you would have two fires at the same time in town so again very important and understanding this so a couple equations that again you don't have to know but just to discuss is there's two ways to basically uh calculate what the fire flow is if you're a city engineer this equation is more a macro equation so Fire flow in gallons per minute is a factor of the entire population, right, in thousands. So basically as your population in your city grows, so does your fire flow demand. And then the second equation is more for a building, how you design for a building. So the fire flow demand is equal to the coefficient C representing what type of structure you know, whether it's timber, non-combustible, fire resistant. So you see that the numbers are higher for wood construction. And then if you have non-combustible like concrete and steel, uh, then fire resistant is concrete steel, but then with extra fire protection. So you see that the, the, the flows go down the more uh, safety and, and, and the more um, protected your building is. Okay. And A is the floor area of your building, excluding the basement, okay? So again, then you can have a couple of combinations of these, like the combined draft is the combination of the fire flow and the max daily flow, so that you could basically be able to service the fire and also that your max daily flow and nothing in your community happens. So municipal distribution systems are typically designed to accommodate either the peak hourly flow or the combined draft, right? So again, just... A couple terms, I think, out of this, I want you to understand that, that there are differences between peak flow for domestic and average uh, daily flow, and also that you understand about fire flow, and that there's some things that go into calculating it, like the population, the types of buildings that you're construction, constructing.